What is the crack, everybody? My name is Jack Batiro, and you are watching Buy, Rent, Avoid. In this show, I pretty much talk about whether a game is worth buying, whether it's worth a simple rent, or whether it is worth avoiding altogether. And today, I am playing a game that I have been looking so forward to. So, without further ado, here is the, my review for Bioshock Infinite. Enjoy, everybody. Okay. Are you afraid of God? No. But I'm afraid of you. Will the circle be unbroken? It has been just over half a decade since the first Bioshock graced our systems back in 2007. It revolutionised first person shooting, setting and storytelling in a genre that was going stale due to generic shooters concentrating more on their online multiplayer and producing lacklustre stories. Now with the long awaited release of Bioshock Infinite, the question has to be asked. Has it come to save us again, or is it merely joining the long list of boring action games that is clogging up our systems? Let me start off by saying that any fears of this game being just another dull shooter can be happily discarded, as Bioshock Infinite is a visually stunning and well crafted game. Much like when its predecessor was released, it's like it knew gamers were in need of an action packed shooter with a story that grips you throughout the campaign and will stay with you for the rest of the year. Still go on. The city of New Columbia needs its own section in the review. The lead up to seeing the city for the first time is done nearly the exact same way as seeing Rapture. Is this a problem? No. The introduction to Rapture is so iconic, why not use such an excellent way to introduce the city? The sprawling cityscapes, coupled with the mists of the cloud and the glaring light of the sun shining through, offer a drastic change from the dark, dank streets of Rapture. What adds to the formula of making New Columbia so spectacular is watching the citizens go about their day-to-day -day lives as if you're not even there. Watching men on the beach do exercise programs, seeing a couple dance along with an a cappella band, or even watching some children play hopscotch singing a nursery rhyme about the songbird. It truly makes the city come alive in a way that I've only seen done in games like Grand Theft Auto or Skyrim. Irrational games have considered everything about the time period that the game is set in, including the design of the clothes, the design of the propaganda posters, and even in a very controversial move, including some very racial beliefs that existed at the time. New Columbia is a very patriotic and prejudiced city. They believe they have a sort of hierarchy over the Irish, believing them to be drunken immigrants, and African Americans, thinking them to be of a lesser form of human, which mimics the deep racial hate held by many Americans in the early 1900s. However, regardless, it is still interesting to walk around the streets of New Columbia and listen to the stories of the citizens, which paints a portrait of what life would have been like in the fictional city and also 1912 America, and at no point playing the game should you ever think that Booker is the main character, rather it is the sprawling city of New Columbia. Good luck with that, pal. Throughout the game you take control of Booker, an ex-Pinkerton agent with a massive debt problem. And in order to rid himself of the problem, he decides to take on one last job with a simple mission. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. This girl is Elizabeth, the Lamb of Columbia, with a very special gift. Whoa! Besides the city, Elizabeth seems to be the main key focus of the game. She has been trapped and studied her entire life and seeing all these new and wonderful things like hearing live music and dancing is such a rush for her that she almost can't contain herself. Watching her facial expressions and seeing the way she reacts actually reminds me a lot of Rapunzel from the Disney film Tangled. How about Paris? Paris? I don't understand. How could we get there? That's where that airship's going, but if you want to stay and dance, we can... No, let's go! Come on, let's go! Come on, let's go right now! However, at this point you might be wondering, what villain is keeping Elizabeth locked in the tower? His name is Father Comstock. The Lord forgives everything. And I'm just a prophet. So I don't have to. Self-appointed ruler of Columbia, he has convinced the citizens of the city that the founding fathers are to be worshipped like gods. Jefferson, Franklin and Washington are idolised by the citizens, along with Comstock, who believes himself just to be as godlike. The citizens of New Columbia have fallen hook, line and sinker for Comstock's web of lies, developing an unyielding trust in his words and beliefs, and doing anything to uphold his ruling. And I really mean anything. 
Jesus! Of course, how much of a problem can a religious zealot and his loyal followers be for a Pinkerton? Well, in the city of New Columbia, he really isn't the scariest thing there. The Songbird is the new big daddy of Bioshock Infinite. Seen as the boogeyman, he is more of a myth and legend for the people who live on the ground. But for the citizens of New Columbia, he is seen as the watchman over their lamb Elizabeth. He also seems to be used as a scare tactic for children, as when you're walking around the city, you would hear them sing nursery rhymes about how the songbird is going to get them if they don't behave. The gameplay is exactly how you remember it from the first Bioshock. It is fun, fast and the AI are relentless, however at the same time it's fair and also refined. My current playthrough is on medium and for me the challenge is enough for me to sweat it out a bit during the tougher sections but also enjoy the story at the same time. The AI have obviously been revamped, using their surroundings to their advantage and the stronger enemies know that they can take a bit more damage so they are constantly coming at you. Like in the original Bioshock you are given access to special abilities called Vigors which were originally called plasmids, but bar a few new additions they work exactly the same and I actually felt more compelled to use them in this game compared to the first Bioshock. I think it's because there are many more enemies in a normal encounter now, all of which come with different abilities. There are the melee types, there are the shooters and also a lot of the time there is a turret placed at the back constantly shooting at you. Because of the large amount of enemies in these situations, the vigors can be extremely useful. The possession vigor can be used to take over a human AI or a turret and then have it turn into an ally for you to use for a short time. Or you can use murder of crows, which deals your enemies while you run for cover or get in close for the kill. Eventually, once Elizabeth joins you in the story, she then becomes a major part in the combat. She is able to toss you health packs, salt, or even new weapons for you to use. Then more useful during the sections of more enemies, she is able to use a special ability known as Tear to produce cover for you. A key point for most of the demos back in E3 was the inclusion of the Skyline. This is used to transport goods and cargo about Colombia. However, you can use it to your advantage by using it to sneakily take out your enemies before you realize you're there, or grinding along the rail to take them out from above. I've only been playing Bioshock Infinite for around 4 or 5 hours and already I have so many questions that I need answered. Like who are the strange man and woman that keep offering me these little choices and what effect they'll have in the game. And I also look forward to seeing Elizabeth's origins and also her link with the songbird. Bioshock Infinite is a truly gorgeous game and well rounded. According to most game reviewers it takes them around 12 to 15 hours to complete the main body of the campaign, not including the small side missions of the game which cause you to go back to previous areas which I'm sure will increase the total gameplay time. Much like its older brother this game is truly beautiful and also gruesome at the same time. There is a lot of gore which would mean a lot of younger gamers should maybe stay away. However regardless I can quite happily say that Bioshock Infinite is definitely worth a buy. This game is so rich with content, it should be played by anyone that is a fan of first person shooters. I'm truly looking forward to seeing what the city of New Columbia has in store for me, and hopefully we'll see some relation to the city of Rapture. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I realise my speaking and my voice patterns may be completely up and down with this. This is the first time I've made a script for what I've actually been saying, so I've been kind of reading that out at the same time, so hopefully over time I'll get better at it. But as always guys, thank you for watching, please if you like the video give it a like, if you enjoy any other of my videos or if you enjoy fun stuff just click the subscribe button, it always really helps out. But as always guys, my name is Jack Potato, I am a Christian and I will see you all next time.